And we are live, joined this hour by Lupe Carrasco Cardona, um, who is, uh, we were catching after a very long day. Um, Lupe, um, you know, this was a historic uh, drive. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what, what the call was, what it was, and, uh, and how, it got, how it got, you know, what was the genesis of this? Yeah, so um, the organization I belong to, Union del Barrio Los Angeles, um, they basically called together this action and in solidarity for Black Power. And so it was, it was a beautiful caravan because we, you know, we want to recognize that no matter how much um, the government and the people who can benefit from opening up an economy um, want us to think that the, the world is safe right now from COVID-19, we know that it's not. So we chose a caravan. It was beautiful because it allowed us to um, cover a lot of um, territory. So we, we started at um, the Woodlawn Cemetery on Greenleaf and Central Avenue. And um, we, wow, it was, it was beautiful. We got there, you know, really early to, you know, get the, um, the posters and tape and just to support folks that were showing up. And um, really early, it was obvious that it was going to be big. Um, the, essentially the, I never saw the end. I never saw the end of the car security who was patrolling and just ensuring that everybody was safe and going on the route. Um, they reported about 90 blocks of cars that were part of um, the Union del Barrio uh, caravan. So um, yeah, we basically, we went from uh, Greenleaf and Central all the way down Central um, until we got to um, Washington. And then from Washington, um, we went down to Los Angeles um, and then from Los Angeles to First Street. And basically by the time we got to around Second Street, the many of them showed up and they were starting to block the streets. So as lights were turning red, they were cutting the caravan. And so it got really difficult to stick together at that point. But, um, but you know, we, we more or less did. And so the original action was for us to, um, to park in front of the LAPD headquarters and do our live demonstration there. Once again, like I said, um, we are being very mindful of the fact that, um, you know, black, brown, our native relatives are dying at higher rates of COVID-19. So we wanna make sure to not organize an action that's gonna put people in, in, um, in that type of danger. And so um, that was the original plan. We didn't get as many cars at that point because more or less by, um, by the time we got to Second Street, that's when, when um, the caravan got blocked. But it was still a beautiful drive from all the way through Compton into South LA and then all the way into downtown. Downtown, yeah. beautiful. beautiful. Can you speak a little bit to the significance of, of where the caravan started? Like, where, why was that point um, chosen? Yeah. So uh, Bunchy Carter's um, is buried there. And so there was a beautiful um, uh, press conference, you can say press conference that happened there with uh, other former uh, Black Panthers speaking about the legacy of the Black Panther political party and you know just the need for Black power. And um, the other thing that was very significant about this specific caravan, it was just the huge message of um, Black and Brown solidarity very beautiful so that was essentially why that place was chosen um the owner of the cemetery um opened up the cemetery for for this action was was very much in support and solidarity with with um honoring bunchy carter and so um yeah so it was just a, it was a beautiful um thing that um that there were so many people we were lined up on uh green leaf and it started people um, also in the cemetery. So it was really hard to tell exactly how long and like how many cars there were, but um, 90 blocks is what um, what was measured once everybody was on um, on Central because you can, it's easier to measure because of the, the street, right? The numbered streets. Yeah. Nin 90 blocks. That's incredible. That's yeah, incredible. It, was, it, was a be it was beautiful. It was amazing. Yeah. So what? So you mentioned earlier Union del Barrio. What? Why did uh, Union del Barrio feel? I mean, this is you know intended for a wide audience. So for those mm -hmm. not familiar, why did Union del Barrio feel it was so important to uh, to to have this uh, this demonstration of Black and Brown unity? Well, Union del Barrio is a um, independent political organization that believes in uh, self determination, anti imperialism, and so we we recognize that um, the Black struggle 
is um, connected inherently to the brown struggle. And so um, especially, well, in, in you know, what we call the Americas uh, historically, but also in, um, in Los Angeles. And so um, we feel that it's very important for um, black and brown folks to come together to fight um, common struggles that are just in intertwined. So it was, it was well received. I felt, oh gosh, it was, um, there were times I wanted to cry along the way, just, um, you know, uh, coming, going through the streets and seeing uh, people, families, you know, grandmothers, um, you know, putting their fists up and saying, thank you, looking at me in the eye and saying, thank you, sister, thank you. It, it was, it was beautiful. And then also too, you know, um, going through neighborhoods, as you know, there are many, um, you know, Chicano, Central American uh, communities all mixed up in all those areas. And it was just beautiful to see them putting their fists up and saying, you know, just like feeling the love from black and brown community members was, was, was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a chance to see some of the videos. So what were some of the more, uh, um, I saw that there were all these signs. Was that, for, were those signs all provided from Unita Body or were those signs, the people bring them or, or, or what were we looking at there? There were some that were provided um, by Union del Barrio. We had some that said um, Black Power, Black Power. We had some that said Black Liberation. We had some that said um, Stop Police Terror um, or End to Police Terror. We had some that said um, uh, Justice for George Floyd. We had All Power to the People. So we had, you know, um, quite a few that we handed out and people were so very, very appreciative. Like it was just beautiful. Like I said, like people were like, yeah, you know. So we, we were, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning lined up and we started as people were showing up, giving them posters, but a lot of people brought um, a lot of their own political art as well. Like I know my family, my husband, um, he created a beautiful uh, Justice for George Floyd um, and you know many of the vehicles had um you know flags and posters that they create and some of them you could even tell that like because there were kids and you can see that the kids themselves had created some of the political posters as well yeah what were some of the more interesting signs that you saw um uh, on the on the that you were can you crawl oh my gosh okay so one it was very 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 um hard to read um you know it's just it it's heartbreaking and, and it was um, literally a poster of the last uh, words of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, gosh, like, yeah, as, as a mom, you know, I'm a, I'm a mother and, and, and just to um, think that that could happen, you know, to, to a child, to, well, somebody's child, right? And, um, you know, he's calling out for his mom. And so to really like try to hold back um, my tears to see that that particular poster on a vehicle, um, but I think a lot of the ones that I um, that were really um, empowering for me, um, honestly, all of them. There were you know a lot of um, you know Black Lives Matter, a lot of Black Power, uh, Uhuru, um, a lot of um, different uh, flags that were representative of um, of other solidarity um, like Cuban flags. Mexican flag, just different things like that that really showed like, um, you know, this beautiful community. So Union del Barrio. Yeah. <laughs> Union flags, but um, just tons, tons and tons. Lo loved it, you know. Love right. to see the, the, um, the compassion and, and the, well, the anger. Why do you, well, that, that's kind of, why do you think this, uh, this, this, um, this event resonates so much um, with, you know, with this population, with, you know, primarily kind of, you know, the Rasa population. Why do you, why do you think they're so, um, um, empathetic is the wrong word. I mean, why, why are they, why, why do they feel the rage do you think as, 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 as much as, as they do as well? So it's a question of like humanity, right? And then it's also a question of like, um, it's something that, um, you know, our community um, faces as well, right? Like. Um, brown men, brown women, indigenous women and men um, also die at high rates at the hands of the police. So it's something that a lot of people can relate to. A lot of mothers, a lot of brown mothers can relate to. Um, but, you know, ultimately, like I said before, like we, we understand as a political organization that, um, you know, there's been 500 years of colonization and that colonization has, um, has four or 500 years 
main oppression, aggression, genocide, attempted genocide, um, you know, murder impunity um, on black and brown people. Black and brown people, when I say brown, um, you know, in that I also am referring to our native um, people here on this continent. So it's it's something that um, as a as a, it's a humanity, but it's also a political understanding of an interconnectedness. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you uh, mentioned, you mentioned oh, kind of weird echo. So you mentioned earlier the Uhuru movement. So what is the relationship between Yuri Del Barrio and the Uhuru movement? So our, um, one of our sister organizations is the African People's Socialist Party. And so um, their political platform is in line with the political platform of Union del Barrio. So um, we really believe that um, capitalism is, um, is essentially what is allowing these things to happen. And so we believe in abolishing capitalism. We believe in a, in a, um, in a socialist um, society. And so does the African People's Socialist Party. So that's our that's our sister organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. one of one of the uh, the um, one of the main things that you kind of reiterated that it was really important to make sure that we were still um, being mindful of uh, well, that they were still the organizers were still being mindful of uh, of COVID nineteen and the preparation. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. I know that um, I know that that's one of the big points that that Unido Body is looking at going forward is that you know to. To attend uh, events and maintain, you know, the the, the pandemic-related precautions. Right. Is that something you could like speak a little more to, like why why you and the body think that's so important? Well, I mean, right now, I think um, just I don't know if it was. Again, we've already reached a thousand uh, deaths in the United States from COVID nineteen, um, and we know that's disproportionate um, among you know, the black community among, uh, you know, Chicano Latino community and, and among um, people, our relatives on the reservations. And so we, we know that right now there's this like general um, brainwashing of um, like, oh, okay, we've already gotten past this, but we know that it, we, it have, we have not gotten past this. Like I am a teacher and I um, um, have students right now that are are freaking out about graduation because um you know they've been not able to keep up with their work and you know we there's a lot of reasons for that there's like the digital divide or you know, there's all kinds of reasons right but one of them is that families are suffering with COVID-19 like right now like we have students who themselves are positive or um I have one who's um got a family brother who's on a ventilator right now. Um, you know, we've lost people in our family. Um, we know people that have lost family members. Um, we know people that have gone, um, had to go, you know, quarantine because they, they were tested positive and they had to protect their families. So we know that this is impacting um, many people right now. And I feel like um, we know that because of capitalism, right, this need to get the economy going again, um, there's this false sense of we're out of this already, and I um, and, and we're really not, um, we really are, we really still need to protect ourselves, and so, um, and, and we live in, like, denser, you know, we live in, in, in our homes, like, our population is more dense, like, there are more people living in homes, um, and so when uh, someone is out working or doing whatever it is that they're trying to make us feel like it's safe to do without our masks and being diligent to to protect ourselves and we can bring that to our, our homes which we know are densely populated right whole families and so yeah so we've been very diligent about not support even even if we're supporting the political um platform of a of a um an action we um, we are wanting our you know our solidarity brothers and sisters to be a little bit more careful with the contraction of COVID nineteen. Yeah, another big thing your uh, Union of Barrio um, um, emphasizes is the importance of collective action versus uh, individual yes. kind of adventurism. Can you speak a little bit to what is meant by like individual adventurism versus a collective? Yep. Absolutely. So I mean, a lot of um, a lot of what you're seeing right now with the um, the protests, some of it is um, you know groups of people who work as a collective, 
Um, and, and a lot of it is just, you know, like lone wolves who just like, you know, want a little action or maybe they do believe in, in the movement itself. So they're out there. But um, when the dust settles and the excitement is over, um, we really need to make sure somebody's there doing the work, right? So if we're, if we're talking about like defunding the police, we need to make sure that there's somebody who's there to, um, to A, make sure that that really happens, right? And then to um, reconstruct the new system, right? And so we as Union del Barrio, we make our, our decisions together as a collective and they're in line with our political line. And, um, and we don't, so we don't just go out and just make decisions on our own on a whim for you know whatever reasons that people you know are motivated to to um to go out and and be part of these movements yeah but we, so we want to be there for the long haul in other words like to continue to do the work so i mean as as this movement has grown as things have happened as things have developed we've seen that um you know you know trump has been very going very fascist but but a lot of other elements of the state, a lot of other elements of the bourgeois, they, they're a little more smart. They're a little smarter, they're a little more tactical, they're a little more like trying to pull off things, right? So one of the things that Union del Barrio says is that, or, or I've, I've read, is that they're, they're really, they really want to be people mindful of never to side with the state or police, right. uh, never side with the corporations, and never right. side with either political party. Can you, can you tell us why? Well, I mean, for one, like an example, uh, this is an example that just came to me right now, like, um, um, Walmart statement, like I got this email, whatever, this random email, and it's like a statement from Walmart saying that they're going to, they're going to do better and they want to be, they're going to push change and so on and so forth. But like Walmart is notorious for underpaying their workers. They're notorious for not giving health care. They're notorious for, um, you know, like we as a country um, still have to um, subsidize uh, their, their workers who still qualify for, you know, um, for welfare, for food and whatnot, because they're not paid enough. They, they work, you know, they work hard for one of the richest corporations. And, and, um, and then so now they want to tell us, they want to give us this, this statement that they're for Black lives and they're for um, change, but that's, you know, it's just, it's just talk, right? It's just, there. it's like, it's like, it goes in line with this whole idea of like, oh, okay, we're all safe from COVID now. So just go back to work. It's like, whatever it is, it's going to give them their, um, their, essentially their, um, just so they can continue to make, make the, can't, we can't, um, you know, just think that there is just going to be given to us like that. It, it becomes like a marketing ploy for them. Like we, we need a new system. We need to, uh, you know, we need a new system that isn't the system currently in place. So um, the, other, the other one was uh, uh, not to trust either of the political parties. Obviously um, there's a lot, they're, they're both trying to vie to, to, Correct. to, to you know, explain why they're the party that will lead us through this moment, right? So uh, mm -hmm. uh, can, you tell us, can you tell us about that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, um, like the whole lesser of two, um, like the, the Democrats have been as racist as, you know, they, they, you know, they vote, they put their, they take money, they, you know, they pretty much um, have done the same politically as the Republicans, but in a little bit more of a like, you know, politically correct sounding um you know, appeal to the masses, some, you know, a bit more fair, but at the end of the day, they're still supporting the, you know, prison industrial complex. They're taking money from the prison industrial complex. They're still um, voting for war. They're still giving money to the war machine. They're still, uh, you know, underfunding schools. Um, they just might be a tad bit better, but they're still, they're still, um, you know, by the millions when they're in power. There's still, um, you know, mass incarceration of, of, of black men, at, you know, so yeah, we, we, we don't fall into the whole, you know, Democrats are the way to go. So um, the other thing that's really big on is uh, this, this question of, uh, uh, you know, kind of accountability to organization outside of just like individual kind of whatever. So this, this question of accountability, it's a question of, um, you know, like, yeah, I mean, there's another way to put it. The question of group accountability and, and to act as a collective. Can you, can you speak a little bit to why that's so important in moments like these? 
Yeah, it's important because it's easy to get caught up into that. Um, you can get caught up in the excitement. You can get caught up and get caught up in, 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 you know, the, the sentiments of things and act as an individual that will take you away from the long-term work that needs to happen. And so, um, and so, yeah, so we make our decisions together as a collective and we, you know, we do a lot of um, what they call political education where we, um, we read into it, we, we analyze it, we discuss it, and then together as a collective, we make these decisions and then we, and then we act on it. So, I mean, there's, there's more to it than that, but that's a simple way of, um, of explaining it. So in this moment, like, particularly in the moments like these, when it seems like, okay, right. I just need to get out there and do something, right? Right, um, right. The thing you should do is what? The thing that you should do is be smart about what you're doing, right? To be, to make sure that you're, um, that you're falling in line with what the collective has, with what the organization has decided to do, right? Um, because every time we're out there, we're not just representing ourselves, we're representing our organization. And so all of us are, you know, we expect each and every one of us to act with the utmost um, respect and to, and to just be, put our best foot forward that represents who we are as an organization. And so, you know, um, I mean, that's just the, the, the simple way to answer it. But um, something that I, I also wanted to share with you is that we are, as a, as a collective, I'm on a, what they call a teacher base. And so um, the educators are coming together to create um, an alternative school program this um, summer for high school students or even like college, like, you know, freshmen, freshmen, maybe even sophomore college students to part in this, um, it's called Escuela Aslan. And so it's something that, um, that we've done before. Uh, we usually um, have it, we usually do it, hold it in South Central but because of you know COVID, we're doing a virtual. And so, if folks are interested in um, in you know signing up their 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 students, their children, or if, if uh, you know the high school youth themselves want to sign themselves up, college youth they can. Um, and so, it's something that's going to be really powerful because it's going to go into you know different issues of um, identity, but also this history of like collective organizing, um, and also like the need for for ethnic studies for everybody and so like even the, the history of you know how ethnic cities can prevent things like this from happening from you know, like the police violence from occurring um, and how and also prepare us for how to respond and so yeah so Escuela Aslan if folks are interested in, in signing up I'm sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> I know, I know. And so far, you know, uh, we'll, cut it, we'll cut this short, but just yeah, no. no, I'm just like, I'm trying to think, but yeah, like I, you can see like my cheeks are red from, um, from being out, like hanging out the window. I got, I have one arm that's burnt. Oh. The other arm is not. We can call it, we can call it after this, but I, I want, I want people to know what can they do to follow um, the upcoming uh, UDV events uh, related to related to this moment, related to uh, you know the justice for 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 George Floyd and just and just in general the the, the movement. Okay, yeah, you can um, you can follow Union del Barrio um, on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, Instagram. There's uh, Union del Barrio and Un Union del Barrio Los Angeles in San Diego. And, um, and then also there's Escuela Aslan. You can follow Escuela Aslan. Um, you can message me um, at Lupe Y. Cardona, Lupe Y. Cardona or on Instagram so that I can give you the uh, registration information. Um, the kickoff day for Escuela Aslan is gonna be the 13th, uh, but the actual curriculum is gonna start on the 20th of June. So if you want, um, and it's just like one Saturday, um, it's like two hours every Saturday for a few weeks, for about seven or eight weeks. And so, yeah, so you can do that. Those are, those are ways that you can uh, keep on top of what's going on with, with Union. But right now, the, um, the next big Union project that's, that's kicking off is um, Escuela Aslan. Well, thank you, uh, Lupe, for all that you do, and thank you for your time right now. So thank, I really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having me.